everyone. We're really excited to be here today with another Yale Alumni Live. We are going to be going live in just a moment with Dylan Gomi, class of 2013. She is a fitness instructor. You may have seen her on Instagram doing her thing with berries. And she also was recently an American Ninja Warrior competitor. So we are very excited to have her today. She's gonna to be joining live in just a minute. We're gonna have a quick conversation with Dylan about what she's been up to since coming to Yale and now what she's doing in her professional career and just a little bit about what it was like to be an American Ninja Warrior competitor, which I'm sure some of you are fans of. I know I am. I think it's so much fun to watch these amazing athletes compete in a different way than we normally see on TV. So she should be joining us any minute now. Dylan Gomi, class of 2013. Hopefully everyone enjoyed our escape room live last week, which was a lot of fun. Escape New Haven was our sponsor for Yale Alumni Live last week, and they were amazing. They've done a great job switching things up from a live event to a virtual event to keep things moving along in their business. So thank you for joining us if you did that last week. And we're here today with Dylan Gomi, class of 2013, who will be joining me any minute. We are very excited to have her. And let's see, she is live in just a moment we're gonna have a quick conversation there she is hello <laughs> how are you i'm good thanks for having me we're so excited to have you today and i was just telling everybody that we're gonna have a quick maybe you know five seven ten minute conversation and then dylan is going to give us a quick 20 minute workout that you can do at home so we'll get started right away because i know that your schedule is tight so thank you for fitting us in so dylan just tell us a little bit about where you came to Yale from and what your Yale experience was like. Oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, the, the smile came very quickly when I started thinking about uh, <laughs> being at Yale. So I'm originally from Illinois. And I remember when I was deciding about schools, I came to visit Yale and it was raining and extremely dreary. And I'm definitely somebody who like the second moisture touches my hair, it goes Phew. that usually like creates a very unhappy state. But I remember like Bulldog Days being one of the best times ever and feeling like everybody um despite like you know arguably being like some of the smartest kids on the planet just being so excited that I was there and all like my new classmates were there and I was like if this is what it's like when the weather is terrible I can't wait to see what it's like in in, in real life <laughs> um and yeah it's like one of those moments that you look back at and be like this was 100% the right decision um like when I think about my best friends now, like like the uh, like that, like in my professional career, my personal life, um, a lot of those relationships started at Yale. Um, so like, and which residential college were you in, Dylan? I was in Davenport, which is the best college, <laughs> as many people know. That's a um, favorite question to ask a Yale it's like, because it's always the name of the college and then the best college. It always comes after. <laughs> yes, but in my case. <laughs> I, I, I'm it's really truthful. true. It really is truthful. But like, I mean, and I even rem I like distinctly remember like doing like the roommate form. And then like, it's kind of like the sorting hat where like, I was like, yes, I'm more pleased. I'm more pleased. I'm more pleased. I'm for it. So yes, um, I couldn't agree more. It is very Harry Potter Hogwarts ish. So <laughs> tell us what you studied at Yale and then what you did right after Yale. Yes, so I study poli sci interdisciplinary African studies, um, and I'm I'm Nigerian, but I think it was actually really interesting to get to know the continent in an academic context, um, and not like beyond Nigeria as well. And I think one of the things that I really fell in love with was how everything's very interconnected. It's not just about politics; it's also the economies of the country, it's the history of the countries, and how that makes them play on a global scale. So then I guess fast forwarding to what I wound up doing right after, I was working in foreign exchange at, at uh, Bank of America Merrill Lynch. And if you want something that is like one of the most macro products that's sensitive to everything that's happening in the world, FX was it, or foreign ex abbreviation for foreign exchange is FX, that is it. Um, I remember my internship summer being so enthralled by the fact that like the Olympics were happening and you might see like a currency rally based on like how a certain country did in, in one of the sports and it's like, it's like, oh, this is giving us faith in Brazil. Like that was so cool to me. And, um, and you know, I think that was the beginning of, of some of the, the themes in my life that I started learning where like the people you work with are pretty much everything. 
Mm -hmm. um, and people from my internship summer at Babel are still people that I talk to now. These are people that mentored me um, and really um, thought of me and like the my whole self because like, it's kind of funny. Like there weren't necessarily a ton of Yaleys at, on my desk mm -hmm. um, at, at the time, but they, they saw that I had this capacity to pick things up quickly and I was quantitative as well as somebody that was like good at, at interfacing with clients. And um, along the way, I got really interested in financial literacy while I was working um, in, in foreign exchange. And that was something that uh, my, my colleagues and the firm supported. They supported the fact that I loved making financial literacy videos and that um, thankfully became a partnership with the firm. But then I started working across the country with, with Bank of America and giving financial literacy presentations and making content. And at the time we had a partnership with Khan Academy, which um, was really cool. And I got to go meet Sal Khan through the firm and learn about how to make financial literacy videos better. So um, it, it, it's interesting how like, you know, I went into finance and like that was sparked by like my, my love of, of how um, so many things can digestively tie together and um, finance was the beginning of me really understanding that one of my favorite things in the world is just making very complicated things, whether it's foreign exchange or financial literacy, really easy for people to understand. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, along the way, when you're, you know, giving financial literacy presentations and then also working, you know, like 60, 70 hours a week on a, on, on a trading floor, uh, there's this thing that kind of happens and it's called burnout. <laughs> and you're like, what, what's this, you know? You know, it's like... <laughs> I thought that was a thing that I didn't do. Um, and I'd always been somebody who was sporty, but I didn't really do sports in service of, of like wellness. It was like, mm -hmm. you know, you do fitness for your sport. Um, and it was like while working at Merrill Lynch that I discovered fitness and I felt like I discovered this magical secret. I was like, wait, like now that I know to, to go work out in the morning before work, I know I need to be really productive. So maybe I can squeeze in a workout after work. And I yeah. should eat better because then I'm going to realize my gains and, well, like, hey, I can open a jar of peanut butter by myself. And <laughs> this is great. Yeah. This is fantastic. Why isn't everyone doing this? Right. Um, but then fitness, not to use too much alliteration, but fitness was like that next thing from foreign exchange to financial literacy and fitness mm -hmm. that became the thing that I wanted to make really easy for other people to, to grasp and mm -hmm. to make very accessible. Um, so that... Um, as much as I actually like really did enjoy like the people I was, I was with at Merrill, that was kind of what cued my spark of realizing I was really passionate about the wellness space, but not yeah. necessarily knowing what to do about that from behind an Excel sheet. Um, sure. Yeah. So from so there, here, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so here yeah. we are now and yeah. tell everybody a little bit about what you're doing. So I'm watching your time because I know we want to get in a 20 minute workout. Oh, we're going to work out guys. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> we're going to be burning at the five minute mark. So <laughs> we're good. Trust so tell us, tell us how you transitioned into this whole new space and what you've been up to lately. Yeah. So uh, I guess the transition did happen while I was working at Merrill. Uh, I started teaching 10 to 12 classes at a spin studio while I was working. And I know it sounds very counter um, intuitive to the idea that I started working out because I felt like I didn't have enough time for myself or teaching classes, yeah. but it was actually very, very fulfilling for me. Um, and that cued my move to HBS uh, because I knew I was really passionate about fitness, but I didn't know exactly what that meant on a grander scale. And that was where I really had the courage to kind of put like entrepreneurship behind what I was doing, where I, um, got certified in as many things that I could as quickly as I could, started my own personal training practice, uh, as well as a life coaching practice. Um, and to the point of realizing that, like, I had had this whole uh, secret that I wanted to demystify for people, that's something that I've been able to give to people online as well as in person. Right now, the on in-person part has probably been the most important, especially during yeah, COVID. Of course. Um, so... Yeah, and then I've been doing that with a variety of brands. Uh, thankfully, like some of my work has been featured in, in, in major outlets. And um, as many ways as I can get innovative about spreading wellness and helping people to become their best selves, I'm doing it. So, so tell <laughs> people where they can find you after today. If they want to follow you, if they want to get in touch, they want to see more workout videos, tell everybody where, you'll, where they can find you. Yes, well, they can find me exactly where we are right now. You can find me at Dylan Gomi on Instagram. Uh, you're also available through my website, Dylan Gomi. Um, 
And then, you know, we can always have a part two. We can always do a few more workouts too. I love part two. I mean, I, okay. I'm not going to work out today, but I, Are you sure? I'm going to record this and then I'm going to play it at home where no okay. one is watching me. Deal. <laughs> Deal. So Dylan, one last And that's question. allowed. <laughs> that's allowed, right? That's why we're recording this for everybody. So one last question before we do get into the workout is, can you just tell everybody a little bit about your time on American Ninja Warrior? Because that is very cool. Besides it being the best thing ever. Okay, so uh, I very much so am the type of person that's like, um, I, I realized that I loved where I'd taken myself in terms of my own personal fitness and what I've been teaching people, but um, life is that much more fulfilling when you kind of have your eyes on something else. And, you know, my sister's nickname for me is like a spider monkey. I was always the person that was like climbing everything. Yeah. Like you can try and hide something on the top shelf, turn around five seconds later, I'm there. Um, so for me, I like, I had seen American Ninja Warrior. I was obsessed with, with the show and I was like, whoa, this stuff is so cool. And I'd been working towards things on my own. Like, you know, I got my box jump up to 42 inches. Um, I have been working on my pull-ups and I was like, well, I keep looking at these people and why not me? Um, like, well, why do I, why am I, why am I thinking about it? Or like, what am I waiting for? Uh, so I tried out. And one of those things where I was just like, at least I can say I, I tried. And then I <laughs> uh, got the call that I was going to be on it. And I didn't believe it <laughs> at all. Actually, my boyfriend found out first. And uh, he said, you're going to be on American Ninja Warrior. And I think I was, I, was, I was just like, stop telling me lies. And by the way, my <laughs> mouth was like full of sushi at the time. I was like, this is not OK. Uh, and buddy was not lying. So, uh, I, and, and at first I didn't think I was going to get to do it this year because of COVID. Yeah. And then, you know, the NBC production team was absolutely incredible in terms of keeping us safe. They let us, they let us know that like, Hey guys, we're going to try and pull this off in three weeks in the middle of the summer. And mind you, I hadn't gotten an opportunity to train during COVID because I also thought we weren't doing this. Um, but once again, for the same reason that I decided to go ahead and, and audition, I was like, look, I worked hard for this beforehand, so I'm going to go for it. Um, and I, that community of, of ninjas and of people is like unlike any other competitive environment in that yeah. like they're, it's a, we're a very supportive group of people. Um, even like, like, like we just randomly call each other. There's people that I've literally not met in person that have been on the show for years um, that like I call and text regularly and talk about how I'm already training for next year. And yes, awesome. I'm already training for next year. That's um, awesome. But yeah, it's there's there's no thrill like those obstacle course. It's an adult playground. Yeah, and a really really fun one. And you know, a couple of million people are watching you do it. It's fun. That's cool. awesome. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So if people were watching and who people watch this in the replay, if there's nothing else that they take from our conversation just now, it's why not me? I think that is such yes. a hugely inspirational statement. That maybe you meant it, maybe you didn't. You probably did because you're a life coach too. But that's such a huge thing. Why not me? You want to do something, you should pursue it. And I love that you get to call yourself a ninja now. I mean, that's kind of amazing. I'm cool. With that. Well, I always called myself a Nigerian ninja. Always have. Um, but I mean, the other thing that I'll say is like, this is meant to be like empowering. Like, I think if there's yeah. anything that this year has shown us, not in a dark way, in, in, in a motivational way, tomorrow's not promised right? Yeah, yeah. So like, why spend time thinking about what you could be? Or like, you're saying like, like, maybe not maybe later. It, it, try now or figure out what the steps are to start working towards it. And it's not making the big lofty goal. It's just like, what is one small step in the right direction? Just one. It's an email. It's calling somebody. It's asking for somebody for an informational call about what they did. And that counts as doing something now. I love Speaking it. Speaking of doing things now. I think it's time. So I'm going to, while while Dylan gets set up to do her workout, we have like 15 minutes. You might have to cut a little bit short. I'm going to turn the comments off and I'm going to go away and it's going to be all about Dylan. So you guys, this is being recorded so you can do this at home with Stephanie, no one watching or you can I'd, get into it right now. So I'd like to think you're doing this with me. <laughs> yes, 
everybody do it with Dylan. I'm going to go away. Thank you, Dylan. Over to you. All right. Hello, everyone. Okay, we're going to get this burn going in about 15 minutes. This is going to focus on all lower body, okay? So our first move is going to be called good mornings. If you're on the West Coast, this works for you. On the East Coast, good afternoon is great, okay? Hands behind your head. Slight bend in those knees as you hinge at those hips. Come all the way. We're going to feel that in your hamstrings, okay? Let's get this first part of the warm-up going in four, in three, in two, and one. 30 seconds here of these good mornings or good afternoons. So I don't necessarily need speed here. This is meant to feel good. It's a little bit of a stretch, yeah? I'm going to show you from the front, too. So here's going to be the change. In 15 seconds, we're going to add a knee twist. It's going to start to involve those core movements, okay? We'll add the core moves in eight seconds. In six seconds, everyone joins in four, in three, in two, and one. Here you go. So when you stand up, you're going to go ahead and feel that crunch in your obliques. I like to pretend I have something right here that I'm trying to crush every single time I hit that twist, okay? You got this. Okay, coming up in 15 seconds, here's going to be your change. We're going to do what's called an inchworm out to plank position. That means we're going to walk our hands out to our plank. That's an eight. You'll join me. In six, you'll join me. Here we go. In four, in three, in two, and one. So you're going to walk it out to plank position. Give me a shoulder tap. Walk right back up to stand, okay? Walk it right back out. Give me a shoulder tap. Walk up to stand. Let's do it. Now, the key to these shoulder taps to make sure that your hips don't rock, is you're going to widen out your feet. Give yourself a wider base of support. All right, everyone, we're going to turn this into the world's greatest stretch. In eight seconds, left hand to left foot. You'll join me in four, in three, in two, and one. Here we go. Left hand, left foot, open your hand up to the sky. This is when you wave at Stephanie. Come right back down, push back down. Our dog will do the same thing on the other side. Right foot, right hand, lean into this low stretch. Wave at the ball behind you or whatever's behind you. Keep going, okay? Two more moves in our warm-up, then we'll move on. All right, 10 seconds away, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hop our feet to our hands like this. It's called a leapfrog, find a low squat, hop back. If you don't wanna hop, you can always step step in and do the low squat. We have leapfrogs in four, in three, in two, and one. Here you go. Plank position, hop as close to your hands as you can. Low squat, hands down, hop it back, or step step, okay? You have 15 seconds. This is when you start putting bets on how many you can do. You got this. Let's go. 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay. High five. The warm-up's done. Let's get into the first part of the circuit, okay? So first thing we're going to do is squat it out. Knees face front, toes face front. You're going to sit back down into that chair, okay? Here we go. 30 seconds of regular squats in five, four, three, two, and one. Here you go. Squat it down. Come right back up. Squeeze at the top. Yeah? So the thing is, this is a body weight workout. So we got to work with whatever resistance we have. What do you have? You can squeeze. Yeah? That's creating extra tension. So here's the change. When I count you in, we're going to stay low. Tap right. Tap left. You'll jump. Okay? In five, four, three, two, and one. Here we go. Now, if you don't want to jump, that's totally optional. You're just going to tap out. Keep going with that squat. 15 seconds here, yay? It's not for long. 10 seconds away, we're going to meet each other on the ground. We have a glute bridge on deck. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nicely done, everyone. Okay, see you on the ground. From here, feet, soles of the feet are on the ground. Lift up those hips as high as you can. Come on down. Lift it up and squeeze as high as you can. Come on down. All the way up, squeeze, come right back down. All the way up, squeeze, come right back down. Let's see it. So good. Okay, now here is the fun part. We're going to go ahead and do hamstring walkouts. Keep your hips up in four, in three, in two, and one. Hips stay up. From here, walk one heel out, walk the other heel out, walk right back in, walk right back in. Out. Out, keeping your hips up as high as you can. Ah! If you're feeling this in the backs of your legs, good. I sound like the sprint guy. Or is he the rising guy now? I think he switched allegiances. Don't worry, I'm distracting you. Keep your hips up. Ten. In eight. Hips stay up in five, four, three, 
two, and one. Okay, hips are gonna stay up. Right here, we're gonna pulse, pulse, pulse. When I count you in all the way up, all the way down, 20 seconds as fast as you can. Ready? In three, in two, and one. Let's go. Down, up, down, up, down, up. You've got this, go for it. So good. We're gonna go into full sit-ups in eight seconds. In six seconds, sit us everyone, four, three, two, and one. Here you go. All the way up, lower down. It's like you're trying to fight gravity on the way down. The slower, the better, making it so you're melting back into the floor, okay? 20 seconds, we're gonna take this right back up to the top. Here we go, 15 seconds, we're going right back up. We'll stand it up in eight. In six, stand up in four, in three, in two, and one. Nice job, everyone. Okay, so that's round one. Let's cycle through it one more time. This time, toes are going to point out 45 degrees, slightly wider than hips width apart. Squat it down. This is called a sumo squat. 30 seconds here, okay? You got this. How do I know? You already did it one time. The second time you do it, you're better. Ah. So I'll remind you of what feels like the easiest thing on, in the world, but we forget so many times. Breathe. All right, everyone, so here's the change. We're gonna add a calf raise and a jump. It's gonna look like this. Calf raise, jump. Calf raise, jump. Everyone joins in five, four, three, two, and one. Let's do it. Calf raise, jump. If you don't wanna jump, that's fine. You're just gonna calf raise, squat, yeah? Not for long, it's gonna take us to the ground. How soon? 10 seconds away. Eight seconds. See you on the ground in five, four, three, two, one. Killed it, team. See you on the ground. Okay, round two with this glute bridge. Here's the change. Ready? It's up, up, down. Up, up, down. You can do it. Ready? Ah! So remember what we said about the squats at the top? Try to get it as high as you can. That's where you're going to squeeze, right? Come on. 15 seconds. We keep those hips up together. We walk out. In five, in four, three, two, and one. Hips stay up. We walk out one heel, walk out the other heel, back in, back in, out, out, in, in. Fight for it. It's not very long. We're nearly there. 20 seconds. We're going to keep those hips up and pulse, okay? 15. Ah! 10 seconds, keep your hips up for me as best as you can. Everyone, that's in five, four, three, two, and one. Hips stay up, ready? Let's pulse, up, up, up. Last time you take it down and up as fast as you can, ready? Two, and one, let's go. Down, up, down, up, yep. So good. Okay, everyone, here's our last move for this part of the circuit. We're going to hit bicycles. We twist it right and left in four, in three, in two, and one. Let's go. Right, left, right, left. Now, if you're not digging bicycles and it's not your jam, you can do this. All the way up, twist. All the way up, twist, okay? Either way, we only have 15 more seconds. So here's where you see if you can add a little speed. Go for it. I'll take whatever you've got for the last eight. Here you go. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Nice job, everyone. Okay. So now we're going to do a little single leg work really fast, okay? So first thing I'm going to have you do is a right side lunge, okay? We'll step it back right side. Come back to stand. Take your time with this move. I'd much rather see you do it right than do it fast. Assuming that I see you do this at some point. Send me those 20 selfies so I know what's happening. Keep me in the loop. 15 seconds, I'm going to have you hold this right leg back, okay? Everyone's going to hold it back in five, four, three, two, and one. Hold it back from here. We're going to straighten, bend. Straighten, bend. Straighten, bend. This is a good time to catch your breath. All right, everyone, coming up in 15 seconds, I'm going to have you hold it down. For some reason, my screen is trying to turn off. Don't worry, we're back. Here we go. Everyone's going to hold it down in eight, in six. Hold it down in four, three, 
two, one, hold it down, little pulse, pulse. When I count you in just for 15 seconds, we're gonna do a split squat jump that looks like this, okay? If you don't wanna jump, you're just gonna keep doing bend and straighten, ready? In three, two, and one, let's do it, let's jump. Jump, jump, stay with me, come on, 10. Last eight, on the ground in five, four, three, two, one. Nice job, everyone. See you on the ground. We're going to do a quick hit of abs. Take it right to the left side. Okay, from here, we have a right side plank. You have a few options. You're going to tap it down if you like. You can go ahead and give me a spider plank. If stacking your feet is too much, you can put one foot in front. These are all great versions of doing a side plank as long as you keep your hips up for me, okay? Now, here's the fun part. We're going to flip over. We're going to be in a plank on our hands soon. Ten seconds. Eight seconds. I'll see you there in five, four, three, two, and one. Here we go. Find that plank on your hands. From here, we're going to go down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. Do your best to alternate which hand is leaning, okay? Breathe it out. Ten seconds, we'll stand it up. Eight seconds, we'll stand up. In four, three, two, and one. All right, team, let's rock it out again on the left side. This time, left leg steps back in five, four, three, two, and one. Almost there, everyone. Okay, let's step it back, left side. Step it back, breathe it out. Feeling so good that you're in the home stretch. This is something you can do at any time. Like you can tell, there's no equipment. It's all body weight, all you. Just trust your body. Eight seconds, we're going to hold it back. In five, in four, in three, two, one. Hold it back, okay? From here, we straighten, bend. Straighten, bend. Less than one minute of these lunge movements were on the ground for abs, okay? Stay with me. My favorite part about lower body is that your hands are free to do whatever you like. We're gonna hold it down and pulse in four, in three, in two, and one, hold it down. Just pulse, pulse, pulse. Ready, round two, jump in three, two, one. Jump, jump, or bend and straighten if you want to, not fear for long, 10 seconds. Eight seconds. On the ground, we'll side plank on the left side. In three, two, one, here we go. Here we go, left arm is down. Lift up those hips. Once again, you've got options. You can put one foot in front if you want to modify. If you want to advance the movement, you can give me hip dips or those spider planks, okay? Final minute of this workout together. Everyone's crushing it who's there, yeah? When I count you in, we're gonna be on our hands. We have mountain climbers on deck, 10 seconds. Eight seconds, final 30 in five, four, three, two, and one. Here we go. See you on your hands. Mountain climbers. Three, two, one. Right, left, right, left. Come on. All the way through, everyone. Keep those hips down. You're at your finish line. Come on. Last ten. Last eight. Five, four, three, two, one. Done. All right, team. Thank you so much for rocking out with me. Thank that you was so much, Dylan. I can't believe you could talk through that whole thing. I would be <laughs> losing it. <laughs> so like Dylan said, send us your sweaty selfies. We'll put them up on Instagram. And this definitely will not be the last time that we see you, Dylan. We need to hear more from you. You have so much <laughs> great advice to give. Awesome we can do another workout. workout. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Let's do Thanks for two. having me. Bula Bula fam. Let's do a part two. I'm down. I'm super down. <laughs> Thanks, Dylan. Talk Everyone to you has soon. an awesome day. Bye, everybody. Bye.